Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs using Canva. So if you're new to print on demand or t-shirt designing and you're looking for some helpful tips and tricks, be sure to stick around. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to create this design right here. This is kind of a tribal mandala styled seahorse with a uh, sort of tribal um, ring around it. And it's kind of got some, some different rainbow colors in it. This actually utilizes a lot of different techniques. So it, um, some we've kind of gone over and some we haven't, um, but we use some of the photo effects. We use some smear effects to get the color. We use some background removal. We did some layering of the backgrounds to get the different colors in the tribal design. And so there's a lot of really fun ways you can play with this. You can spend a lot of time playing with it, trust me. Um, and then there's a lot of different cool ways that you can market this too. So if this is something that you're interested in learning about, go ahead and stick around. Okay, so as always, we're gonna go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels, and so that's how I'm gonna be designing today. Um, I usually go ahead and start with a black background, so we'll just come up here to the corner where it says background color. I can click that and I can select black, and that will give me a nice black backdrop color. Now today's um, video, we're going to be going over how to use some of the photo effects on some of our graphics. Um, in a kind of interesting and unique way. So we're gonna go ahead and just come up here to elements and get started. So if I hit elements, I'm gonna go ahead and do a search. Now in one of the prior videos, I kind of showed you how to search for mandalas and do sort of coloring book style designs. And in doing that, I found some really cool ways to make um, some other really cool takes on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by searching for some mandala animals. Uh, particularly sea animals work really well for this, but you can do anything you want. And so I can come up with mandala animals. I can search by graphics. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different mandala animals that come up. Um, and just mandalas as well. But I'm gonna start way up here at the top. And I mean, I can start with this first one right here. This one kind of looks really cool um, as it is. I'm gonna go ahead. And if I do that, you can see that's really detailed, really cool design. And it's definitely different. You can also then go to your magic recommendations. And if you go see all, there's a lot of other ones. So there's some really cool um, seahorses here, you know, I'm changing my mind. Let's go ahead and just keep it at a white background since most of these are black, just so you can see this real easy and we'll switch it when I'm done. So I really like that seahorse there. I think that's kind of cool. There's another fish here, lots of different fish. Another seahorse that I think is kind of cool. Uh, it's a cool jellyfish. So there's a lot of cool animals that you can use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna use the seahorse because that's a little bit different and I do like the seahorse. So let's go ahead and just select this. So this is the way I'm gonna do it. Now I do like the seahorse to be facing the other direction, just a preference, but I can come up here and hit flip and I can flip horizontal and now he's facing the other direction. So I just like that better. And maybe I give him a little bit of a downward angle. I'm gonna make him really big on my page. So now I got him something like that, more or less centered. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this entire thing right now as is, as a PNG. So we're gonna hit download, save as PNG, but I'm not gonna click transparent background. So I'm gonna keep that white background for this. So in order to make this particular technique work, I have to have a different color background. So I'm just gonna download as is, and you'll see how we can do this. Okay, and now just so I can do a little comparison for you, I'm gonna go ahead and add a page. So I'm not gonna get rid of my initial page. I'm gonna add a page. I'm gonna go ahead and make this page black like I wanted to initially. And now I'm just gonna pull up my saved design right here. And so there it is. And you can see it's loading right here. When this gets to the top, you'll notice that it is done loading and then we can go ahead and uh, play with it. All right. So here I've got my awesome cool design and here I have the original. 
So I want to do some different photo effects on it. So here I can come up to edit image and we've done liquefied before. We've done the wobble effect for text. Now, one of the cool things you can do here is the smear. So if I click smear, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me some different colors. So it's gonna take this black and white picture and it's gonna allow me to put some color with it. So you can already see the way it's popped. Now that's a little bit too smeared. I can't really tell what it is. But if we bring this way down, so I'm gonna bring the barrel way down. I'm gonna bring the smear way down. And if I get it pretty low, you can still see the design and right about yay. Maybe a little bit more, boom. Now you can see how I've gotten a lot of different colors incorporated in here. So just like that, I went from all black to having some colors and I can go ahead and apply it. So that's a really cool look. And so you can do that with any of the mandalas as long as you save it on a white background. Now, the reason you have to save it on a white background is if I come up here and try to do it with just the original, you'll see really quickly that it's not gonna work. So I can come up to liquefy. if it loads. <laughs> I think it's still trying to finalize this one down here, so I've got to give it a second. Yeah, there it is, so now that one's done. Now I can come up here and show you the same thing if I click liquefy. Now all three of these just have a black backdrop, and that's because I didn't have more than one color to work with because this is just black, and because it's by itself, I only have black. Down here, I had black on a white background. It gave me more than one color. And so it was able to, to do that smear effect. But when I just have the image by itself, I'm, I'm not able to do that. Now I can still use some of these other effects if I wanna melt it or, or make it look really weird. But to use the smear effect, I do have to be able to save it on a white backdrop. So I just wanted to show you that. So now that I'm working with this image, there's a few different things I can play with. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and put some filters on it too. I could play with the saturation. I can do a lot of things. So let's say I really want it to be really saturated and make it super bright colors. You can see how I can play with that. And so now it's really saturated. I do really want it to be bright. And then from here, I wanna go ahead and lose this white background. So this can be tough sometimes with these detailed designs. Sometimes you get lucky and it will literally get rid of all the white. And that's really cool because then all you're left with is just these lines. Other times it'll get rid of the outer white part, but it'll keep the inner white part. Either way, that still looks cool. And so I'll show you right here what this is going to look like. So we'll just go ahead and hit background removal and we'll find out. And it'll take a second. It may give us some combination too where we have to use the erase or restore tools to get it just right. But hopefully we're pretty close. Boom, okay. So it did do a little combination. So it erased some of the white, but then it also left some of the white. Now these are gonna be too small of areas to go in and try to erase by hand. So the easier thing to do would actually just be to restore all of the white that's inside of the seahorse and leave the background black. So to do that, we could come up here to where it says restore and we can use our little restore tool and we can just go around the inside border of the seahorse and I can start by making this tool really big to begin with. And so I am just gonna click restore. Now the problem with this is it shows it up on this kind of white checkered background so it's really hard to see if you miss a spot and so that can be tricky sometimes so you definitely want to you know try to cover all of your spots and I'd rather cover more than less just in case because I can always erase a little bit more but I can't restore it once I've saved it. So once it's been erased and I saved it, I can't restore it after that. So I really wanna go ahead and make sure that I kind of restore as much as I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the size down so I can get some of the smaller areas. Um, and some of these can be really hard to see. If I restore it, it's gonna make it white. So you'll lose the checkered. So if you can kind of see the checkered through, 
through the design, then you know you haven't restored it all. And because I'm going to be putting this on a black backdrop, if I miss any spots, it'll show black all the way through. So I want to be careful. I think I'm going to have to make that one a little smaller. And same thing here, I'm going to come up to the face and I really just want to cover every area of this guy because I really want to keep all of this white intact as best as I'm able to. Sometimes the erase um, background tool does better. It really depends on the design and how intricate it is. I've had some really good luck with some of the mandalas and then some of them that just sort of turn out more like this where I have to go through and give it a little bit more time and attention, which is okay. You know, it's, it's always good to, you know, put some time into your designs. You don't want them to be rushed too much, but at the same time, if you're spending an hour to do one design, then it's not very efficient. And especially if you're trying to get up as many designs as you can on different platforms, you don't want to be spending a ton of time on each design. So I'm just trying to do the best that I can with some of these smaller spaces here. This is by far not the most annoying one that I've dealt with <laughs> in terms of having to erase or restore stuff. I have definitely spent a lot of time on some designs that have just been really tough. I'm gonna come down, let me just get the really bottom of the tail, make sure if there's anything in here that needs to be restored that I get it. We're specifically going for anything that looks white. Anything where the white might show through is what we really want to make sure we get restored as best as possible. Okay. So I think I've got most everything. Like I said, it's really hard to see. At some point, you're just gonna have to cross your fingers and, and hope you got everything, which is pretty much what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna just cross our fingers and see what the result is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this and find out what happens. And it actually looks like I got everything the way that I wanted it, perfect. So you can see I've kind of restored the white within and everything outside has been erased. So now I have this kind of really cool looking seahorse design. And again, I can angle it more. I can make it a little bit bigger now. And I can crop and play. Now, sometimes some of the fun things to do would be to put like a border around him. I could also put a mandala in the background behind him too, since he's solid. If I was to put a mandala in the background, it, um, it would actually look pretty cool. So I can come up here still and just do a regular plain mandala. And if I'm able to pick a color here, I could do something like this if I wanted to. Make it a little smaller, sent it back, and I can bring my guy up. And so you could see how you could play with that. That's a little bit busy, so I'm not sure I like it, but it's definitely something that you could do. Um, I'm gonna get rid of it, it's a little bit much. Maybe I'll put like a circle border on it or a tribal border on it. Sometimes those can look good too. So if I was to just put like, um, let's go with like tribal circle and see what happens. Oops. Helps if I spelled tribal, right? All right, so here's some of the cool ones I like to use. So I do like to use this one sometimes. And so it's kind of a cool sort of tribal style circle. And I can take this, I can center that in the page. I can send it to the back so that now my seahorse is over the front. Again, angling my seahorse and making him bigger so that he looks like he's sort of popping out. And then I can go ahead and make this border, you know, backdrop a different color too. So let's say I wanted to make my backdrop here now. Oop, not him. 
I can make it some some of the colors that I see in the seahorse so maybe a blue something bright maybe a dark blue or I can keep it white and one of the cool things I can do is just layer it so if I was to take this and hit control D oops and make a second layer now what I can do is make the second layer a different color and so now if I make that one blue or blue like that and then I can send it to the back and I can make all sorts of fun things here I can put that red on it I can send the red to the back and so now it just gives it a little bit of a pop outside of that white border and so that's kind of cool and then I know there's another one border like this that's very similar except it includes the inside of these little diamonds here it's this one right here and so this one's really cool what i can do is take this put the blue on it i'm going to pull it out so that it's the same size and then i'm going to send it to back and you'll kind of see what happens here so if i can make this one more or less the same size something like that and then I can take it make sure it's centered and then click send to back now you can see because I've gone ahead and layered these borders I've got my white one on top but then you got a little bit of that yellow poking out on the sides that makes it pop and then I got the blue one that has the triangles in the middle at the very back and so it's just giving these triangles through and so now what I've got is a really cool design where I've got all of these different colors and popping layers and I think that that looks just really cool um, I mean, you can pretty much duplicate anything. In fact, since I've got my seahorse here, if I wanted to take him and do a control D, I can duplicate my seahorse. They do like that. That's one cool way to make it pop. If I really wanted to put like a bright color behind him, maybe I keep this on a black background, but I want a bright color to make him pop, maybe something like yellow or teal. I can always bring up a circle and I could make this circle teal. I mean, I could come down and do that or try to match the teal using the eyedrop feature. And I can always bring this to the back. I can try to make it the same size there and I can send this to back. And so now you can see how I can layer some of those designs. I could put text in here if I want to. So there's a lot of fun ways that you could play with this. I don't necessarily like that circle there, or at least not that color. Maybe I do want it to be dark. Yeah, maybe red. I can always undo, try another color. Something reddish looks kind of cool. I don't know if there's really that much red in here, but we can try it out and see how it looks. And so again, playing with it. I don't want to spend too long, but I am fiddling with it now. So there you go. I can do send to back and I can have him pop out like that. And that one actually does look kind of cool. That's a little bit different. So this would be a really cool design to put on a t-shirt for like um, a vacation shirt, a surf shirt. People like to use like the nautical ocean animal designs. They like to do a lot of tribal shirts. You could throw this just on a tank top and just have it be like a tribal shirt design. So I've sold some of these with like turtles and, and stingrays and other kind of um, ocean animals with sort of that tribal design. So there's a lot of different fun ways that you can play with these just to make them unique and original. And you know, you can see how you can go ahead and layer certain things um, to give you this sort of weird look. So I hope this gave you some great ideas. I, I hope you can you know, be creative and find a way to make some money off of this. You don't have to stick with just um, t-shirts either. Something like this could go really cool on a pillow if you were doing some sort of a tribal decor in your house. It might look good on a coaster because it's perfectly round. It could look good on a pop socket because it's round like that. And so try to think outside the box and, and you know i'm sure you can come up with a bunch of different ways that you can utilize this and uh and make it your own and i hope you found this useful and i hope to see you again next time that's it for today's video if you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos as always keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time